station of Fox Sports. We are platform. We are Wisconsin. VR on the first pitch. That's way back, and it is gone. Rizzo in the center field. Broxton at the wall. He reaches up, and he makes the catch. What a play that was. excitement the Brewers hit the road we are in St. Louis the statue of Red Shandings and the real Red Shandings just walk by the Brewers and the Cardinals we're ready for the first game of this four game series Yadier Molina and the Cardinals are hooked up in a wild wild race right now in the wild card situation right now the Giants have a half game lead Cardinals are in there the Mets are in there as well and hi, everybody. We welcome you from Bush Stadium. Great to have you with us tonight alongside Bill Schroeder. I'm Brian Anderson. Craig Cashon is our reporter tonight. Great opportunity for the young Brewers to get in here and feel a pennant race. And the Cardinals are certainly in one. But I think the Brewers learned a lot yesterday about what they can do against a team with the best record, the Chicago Cubs. And Jonathan VR stole the show last night. Hey, it's been a nice season for Jonathan VR. He's been very good at the plate all year. But last night, he did something you don't see a whole lot of. And uh, VR with two home runs, one from both sides of the plate, one right-handed, one left-handed, and certainly carried all the offense. The only two runs the Brewers have scored. VR has actually hit four home runs in four games. It started Sunday with a pinch hit grand slam. So right now, he is in a good home run groove. Hopefully that's going to continue here at Bush Stadium. You can see the list that he's on as far as guys that have hit home runs. Switch hitters from both sides of the plate. Ted Simmons, Dale Swaim, Jose Valentin did it back in 1999, and Jonathan VR last night. So uh, VR has shown good power from both sides of the plate. Most of his home runs have come as a left-handed hitter, but that's because he has a lot more at bats from that side of the plate. Hopefully, that's going to continue here in this series. First time it's happened at Miller Park. Jonathan VR has that designation. The fifth occasion to do it the fourth player in franchise history the Brewers get Junior Guerra back on the mound it'll be his second start since coming back from the disabled list Jeff and Augie will talk Guerra when we continue after this
St. Louis, we've got baseball. The Brewers are ready to battle the Cardinals, and Cam Broxton set to conquer the outfield walls here in St. Louis, just like he did last night in Milwaukee when he made the catch of the year in 2016 for the Brew Crew. Hi, everybody. I'm Craig Kishan here in St. Louis. Almost first pitch here, and a lot of focus still on what Keon Broxton, the young rookie, was able to accomplish. He may have introduced himself to baseball last night as that catch was replayed and replayed and replayed and he takes us through that big play last night. Well, Rizzo has been, he was having great at bats all, all series, you know, every time he hit the ball, he was hit hard. So um, I, I was kind of prepared for, for a ball to be hit my way or, or to the pull side. And, um, and uh, he, he put a good swing on the pitch and uh, I didn't think it was gonna go as far as it did. Uh, I took my head off and ran like towards the running track where I thought it was gonna be. And I uh, saw I kept, it was going to keep going over the fence. So I got, got as close as I could to the fence to see if I had a chance to jump up and catch it. And the ball came down in like the perfect spot for me to jump up and catch it. So just gave it a test try and came down with it. Your reaction was second to none because let's face it, there were a lot of Cubs fans there last night. They all thought it was a home run. And with your reaction, I don't think anyone was completely sure whether you had the ball or not. What, what was it like when your feet hit the ground and, and you realized you had the ball and how big a moment that was? Oh man, it was awesome. I, um, I first realized it was a big moment once the ball hit my glove. Once the ball hit my glove, I knew I was gonna come down with it. And um, to just do it in, in our home stadium like that and uh, protect our house with all the Cubs fans there, it was awesome, man. Uh, I think um, I, I saw like a replay of it or something like that, and the Cubs fans were all sad. So it, <laughs> it, it was good to, you know, get a little payback in, in our home stadium. Good stuff from Cam Broxton there. The Brewers offense has shined as well, and it's reflected in the win-loss column. They've won six of their last seven, and they are set to add to it tonight here in game one of four against the Cardinals on a long weekend. Marte going back. Go over the wall for a grand slam. Off of the bat of Jonathan VR. Wings and rips one into deep left center field. And this one's going to fly. A home run for VR. VR sends one deep into left center. That ball is up and out. It hits the top of the wall. That's way back, and it is gone. But VR has found the home run stroke. Jonathan VR back in the leadoff spot tonight, and he is ready to lead things off. We're ready for baseball in St. Louis. And tonight's game is presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. 
On a rainy day in St. Louis, tarp is off, field is striped, 75 degrees, and they're expecting more rain later tonight, but right now we're looking dry and actually can see a little bit of the sunset off on the horizon. VR Broxton and Braun will start it for Milwaukee. Craig Council then has Perez, Carter, and Santana in the middle. Orlando Arcia, Martin Maldonado, and Junior Guerra round out the starting nine courtesy of Potawatomi and Rock. That is the batting order that will face Jaime Garcia. Yeah, Garcia has been very tough on the Brewers in 19 starts, an 11 and 5 record, a 261 earned run average. Overall having a disappointing season of 441 ERA and a 10 and 11 record. He's lost his last three starts. VR stands in Garcia deals and VR on the first pitch fouls it off and away we go from St. Louis. Great to have you with us tonight. Brian Anderson with Bill Schroeder Craig Kishon a reporter for this four game series in St. Louis. And tonight's game produced by Brent Reeland, directed by Mark Vittorio. The 0 1 is down and in. One ball, one strike. DR now with 15 home runs on the year to go along with 52 stolen bases on the season. He is the first player in franchise history to go 15 and 50. And he has a very good chance. To go 20 and 50 this year. That hasn't been done in over a decade in Major League Baseball history. It'd be nice to see VR you know, finish off strong. It's been a nice year for him offensively. Right back to the box. Garcia makes a nice play, and VR is retired. It is out number one, and that's how the day begins for Jaime Garcia. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of those ground balls, so defense very important. Let's uh, check out the Cardinals. Menard's defense. You got Moss Grissick and Piscotti in the outfield. Peralta, Jerko, Wong Carpenter from third to first, and Yadier Molina behind home plate. And not too many pitchers get more ground ball outs than Jaime Garcia, so it's going to be important for the Brewers, at least early in the count, for him to get his pitches up in his own. Here's Keon Broxton, a new celebrity in Major League Baseball after his extraordinary play in center field last night. A game saving catch home run robbing catch off the bat of Anthony Rizzo and that highlights been running all over baseball today. That's a hot shot knocked down at third base but that's going to be a base hit for Broxton in and out of the glove of Peralta and an infield hit for Keon Broxton. Yeah we talk about all those ground balls that he gets you got to have good defense behind him Peralta on the backhand knocks it down but. Not able to keep it close enough to make a play. And a bullet by Broxton. The Cardinals have committed a lot of errors this year, but most of their errors came earlier this year. They've committed 95, third most in the NL. Now they are still without their all star shortstop and Ledmus Diaz, who is due back soon. Matter of fact, he could be back by the weekend or certainly into next week. He's already playing in minor league rehab games. He was out with a fractured thumb. That'll certainly help the Cardinals cause defensively. A man on, a man out for Ryan Braun here in the first. Early start tonight, if you're with us, good job. Way to read the schedule. <laughs> Let your friends know. This game starting an hour earlier than what is typical here in St. Louis. A 6-15 local start as Braun swings and fouls it away. I've been asking around Rock why the early start I haven't uh, gotten a real firm answer yet a lot of I don't know is and it's just the way we do it and now the Cardinals did play on the road last night and I'm not sure if it was originally thought to be a day game or a, a, an original 715 start not sure but for whatever reason they've started this game an hour earlier on this Thursday night and it's OK sure maybe get it you know started early and maybe beat the rain tonight. Ground ball to short. Got a chance to turn two, and it will go for two. A 6 4 3 double play, and the inning is over. And the ground ball pitcher is hard at work early.
Mississippi River. And there is Mike Matheny, the former Brewer, in year number five as the Cardinal skipper. He has taken the first four teams he has managed to the postseason. His batting order is brought to you by Potawatomi. He's got Matt Carpenter leading off as usual. Jed Jerko on a home run binge in the second half. Steven Piscotti hits third. It goes Molina Moss and Gritchick in the middle with Peralta, Wong, and Garcia rounding out the starting nine. And Junior Guerra back on the mound rock. It'll be his second start since coming off the disabled list. Had a little tightness in the elbow that put him on the DL. Yeah, first time out and no decision. Three and a third, five hits, no runs, 70 pitches. I think he's going to you know, be able to get a little bit deeper here tonight. Making start number three career against St. Louis, both obviously coming this year. He's given up six earned runs in 12 innings against the Cardinals. Now, Guerra made his first start against St. Louis on May 30th, just as he was getting to the big leagues. And, a matter of fact, the Cardinals hung the first loss of the year for Guerra on the board. That was in Milwaukee. And then Junior pitched against the Cardinals on July 10th. Took another loss in that game. And is trying to beat St. Louis for the first time this season. And he'll be on a pitch count, a pitch limit here tonight. It was around 70 to 75 his last time out. He ended up only throwing 70 pitches in three and a third. But the Brewers are operating in a six man rotation and they're going to be very careful with Guerra. But you figure he'll be pushed up to the 85 90 pitch range tonight. Yeah that was a one to nothing victory against the Pirates in Pittsburgh. The game that uh, Junior started. That was a game the Brewers used seven relievers in a one nothing win. Part of that sweep of the Pirates. And the Brewers coming off a series win against the Cubs, winning two out of three, playing good baseball right now. Carter, a Carpenter, I should say, in the right center, and it is down for a base hit. On his way to second with a double. Great effort in right field. But Carpenter, the very talented leadoff hitter, just out of the reach of Santana. And it's a leadoff double for St. Louis. Man, got to keep this guy off the bases. I mean, he's a, the kind of, he's the guy that gets this offense going for St. Louis. You control him, and you have a good chance of beating these guys. Good job of backing up by Keon Broxton, but not able to get it in in time to hold Carpenter with a single. That was a close call out there in right center, and nice effort by Santana. And I'm sure he is soaked down to the bone after that <laughs> sprawl in the outfield grass. It is very wet here. It rained most of the day today. Had the tarp on the infield. No batting practice for either team on the field today. But these fields drain pretty nice. Doesn't look like he's too wet. I think he may have come out all right on that deal. You're right. They do drain this. These major league ballparks just suck up the water and yep. they can get a field ready to play quickly. Might see the grounds crew tonight. They're expecting more rain later. This will be the final trip for the Brewers here into St. Louis, so they certainly want to make sure they get these games in. The Brewers enter into a pennant race with the Cardinals and they get a playoff vibe here in St. Louis. And before it's all said and done, they're expecting 40,000 in the ballpark tonight. Late arriving crowd with the early start. Little tapper going to be a tough play and Guerra has no play. Infield hit for Jed Jerko. Well, he's had a nice season. We talk about all the injuries that the Cardinals have had. Jerko has filled in nicely. He's got 26 home runs and they got him in a number two spot in the batting order here tonight. That fastball in, he beats it into the ground. And we were watching before the game, this grounds crew in St. Louis just absolutely soaked the area in front of home plate. I think to give Jaime Garcia a little bit of a benefit because he's a ground ball pitcher. That ball hit the dirt in front of home plate and just died. So it works to Jerko's benefit as well. Yeah, all the rain that they had, they were actually hand watering that area in front of home plate and just soaking it and then they uh, put some dry dirt on top of it 
you know, to make that area a little bit softer. There's strike one to Steven Piscotti. Yeah, you know, you know a ground ball pitcher's on the mound for the home team when you see this. Yeah, I mean, they just soaked it down there. It had been <laughs> raining all day, and you know that way, you know, a ground ball pitcher, a ball hits in front of the plate like it just kind of dies. It doesn't bounce over the infield when you soak it like that. First and third, nobody out. Cardinals threaten in the first against Junior Guerra. And Piscotti fouls one off, and it's 0 and 2. Cardinals coming off a loss to the Pirates yesterday. Cardinals had a chance to overtake the Giants in that wild card spot with a win yesterday. The Giants lost. They had a bullpen breakdown in yesterday's game against Colorado. But they remain a half game behind San Francisco. Cardinals also had a home run streak snap yesterday. This is the top home run hitting team in the National League. And they had homered until yesterday in 25 consecutive games. Yeah. They were too shy of a major league record set by the Texas Rangers of 2002. Rangers homered in 27 consecutive games. It's unusual. All the home runs the Cardinals have hit, they're typically you know, not a home run hitting ball club, but this year a little different. Piscotti in the air to right field. Santana is over. And set up to run on a tag is Carpenter. The throw comes all the way in up the line. And now it gets away from Maldonado and Jerko will attend. Yeah, not a good throw. You got to throw into second base. I mean, you're not going to get Carpenter on that. It's just a waste of a throw into the infield like that. Throw it into second. Keep the double play in order. That throw is way offline. Catches it in foul ground. You just throw it into second base because Carpenter's going to score. No doubt about it. And that missed badly. And Jerko is able to get into second base. That's a throwing error. That'll be an E9 on Santana. Allowing the runner to advance to second base. And that'll bring up Molina. He's having another great year. He's healthy this season and he's playing a lot. He's at 321 against Milwaukee this season. He's a 296 hitter overall. And he's in the cleanup spot in Matheny's batting order tonight. Runner at second, one away. And Molina on the first pitch, a fly ball out to right center, and Broxton will make the play for the out. Tell you, Domingo Santana looks a little out of sorts. Yeah. He's in right field tonight. Had a great effort on a dive. Now this is a different environment, bigger outfield than what they're used to. He's part of the Brewers' defense tonight, courtesy of Menards and that outfield of Braun, Broxton, and Santana around the horn. The Brewers go VR, Arcia, Perez, and Carter. And Maldonado does the catching for Junior Guerra tonight. Left handed starter on the mound. Scooter Jeanette sits once again tonight. Back to back games for Jeanette on the bench with Perez the starter. Here's Brandon Moss on the first pitch. Perez is out in the grass. He's got it, and that will retire the side. But the Cardinals strike first tonight. They get a sack fly from Piscotti. Junior Guerra and the Brew Crew down 1 0 early.
Park on Tuesday, September 20th to kick off the last season divisional matchup with the Pittsburgh Pirates as the NL Central foes face off for the final time this year. Reserve your spot today at Brewers.com. Bush Stadium, St. Louis, and we're off and running as we go to the second inning. Cardinals get a run in the first on a Stephen Piscotti sacrifice fly. Here is Hernan Perez to start it for the Brew Crew. And first pitch swinging, a swing and a miss. Tough matchup for the Brewers tonight, even though Garcia has had his struggles lately. He has been very good against Milwaukee. A 1.23 earned run average in his three starts. That includes a one hitter that he threw against the Brewers earlier this season. He's got a terrific change up and a two seam fastball and that back foot slider to right handers. Excellent career numbers for Garcia against the Brewers. A 2 6 1 career ERA. And Perez in about face down he goes a strikeout for Garcia out number one. Yeah, but the Brewers have been pretty good against left handed starters. They're 27 and 16 in games started by lefties this year. Including yesterday's win against the Cubs started by Mike Montgomery the lefty. That's good numbers. It's a heavily dominant right handed hitting lineup from Milwaukee. Cubs are off tonight. Cubs are in Houston. They'll start a series with the Astros tomorrow. And right now the Cubs have a nine game or a magic number of nine to eliminate St. Louis and win the division. And now the Brewers try to play spoiler here in St. Louis. Long road trip starts tonight. Chris Carter swings and fouls one back. Brewers. Will go to Cincinnati after this series and then they'll end up in Chicago for four. Versus left handed starters the Brewers as Rock mentioned 11 over. They'd like to add to that and for a ball club. That comes in 15 under 500 for a season record. Impressive that the Brewers have won so many games against lefties. But they have yet to beat this guy this season. I'll take that back. They did beat him once. He's two and one this year. And the Brewers are the only the only team on that list that we just saw that was is under 500 overall. A lot of right-handed pop in this lineup. That's one of the reasons why that record against lefties, left-handed starters, games one, not necessarily meaning they beat the left-hander that night, but they won the game that was started by a lefty. Big difference. Carter in the air. Foul territory. And Carpenter, that one actually comes back, and Carpenter makes a catch. Must be a little breeze blowing. That one looked like it was headed for the seats. Carpenter thought it was headed in there as well and tracks back to the field and out number two for Garcia. Yeah, a lot of foul ground here at Bush Stadium, making it an even better pitcher's ballpark. Tough to hit home runs here, particularly on a night like tonight. A lot of humidity and a lot of foul territory. Two gone for Domingo Santana. Well, the left handed starter on the mound means Santana finds his way in the lineup. It's a bit of a roundabout platoon, but right now, Craig Council is essentially platooning Perez and Jeanette, right hand, left hand. And then when there's a right hander on the mound, Perez will go to right field. That ball's hit hard into center field. That's way back. And that one is gone like a lightning bolt out of here. Domingo Santana. Rips one to center field for his seventh home run of the season, and just like that, we are tied. We have rocket into center field, the 21st home run allowed by Garcia this year. Santana hit two home runs on Sunday in Pittsburgh and gets a pitch up in the zone. That's what the Brewers need to do tonight to Garcia. Early in the count, 
Make sure he gets it up in the zone, and that's what can happen. He doesn't throw very hard. Way back in center. Right, you just don't see that much on a line that travels that far. That one left the bat in a hurry. Now Arceus sends one deep to right field. That's got a chance. And this one is gone. Orlando Arcia with a home run. Back to back home runs for the Brewers. Santana and Arcia. And just like that, the Brewers have the lead. Number three of the season for the 22 year old rookie. Man, once again, another pitch up in the strike zone. This time, Arcia taking it to the opposite field. Now that's his natural stroke, right field. They've been pitching him in a lot. Garcia doesn't do a whole lot of that. You can see where that pitch is up outer half and drives it out of here to right field just out of the reach of Piscotti. Able to sneak over that wall and right. That is a deep alley here at Bush Stadium. Those 375 in the gaps here. First pitch swinging Maldonado a slow roller Peralta's got it on the air head and he makes a play to end the inning. So the Brewers much like what we saw last night on the attack early in counts and they strike twice in the second Santana and Arcia with back to back homers. Six five, and he's got a lot of pop in that bat, and he just destroyed one with two outs in the second inning. Rock this left the bat at 105.8 miles an hour, travels 440 feet. Yeah, just a good leverage. He stands tall and gets good backspin on that baby. And look at that, almost 106 miles an hour on the cut fastball by Garcia that stayed in the middle part of the plate. And then Arcia doing what he does best, going to right field on the pitch up and away. Just able to sneak it over the fence. Brewers get back to back homers with two outs and give Junior Guerra a lead as we go to the second inning. Randall Gritchick starts it for St. Louis. Cardinals get a run in the first on a sack fly. Back to back hits to start the game against Guerra. And a shot up the middle, base hit. Gritchick with a single. And first time out after coming off the disabled list, Junior Guerra had a difficult time locating and getting strikes with that split change. He really had a difficult time getting command of that pitch and was able to get through those three plus innings with basically just fastball, two walks, three strikeouts, and five walks or five hits against the Pirates, but did it really with. Just the one pitch. He's going to have to uh, have better command of that off speed pitch tonight for sure. Guerra went nearly a month between starts.
started on August 3rd against San Diego. He took a loss. His elbows started to flame up a little bit, so they put him on the disabled list. Didn't come back until September 2nd in his last start against Pittsburgh. Facing Johnny Peralta with a man on, nobody out in the second inning. First of four here in St. Louis will be here through Sunday. All night games with the exception of the Sunday game that'll be a day game. Back in a 7 15 first pitch tomorrow and then Saturday we're back to a 6 15 first pitch central time. How about Sunday and then the uh, the day game on Sunday rock because <laughs> I know you're wondering is 1 15. OK. So I'll put that on your pocket calendar. Make sure you're not late. Johnny Peralta missed significant time this year with a thumb injury injured it early in the season had to have surgery came back and had another stint on the disabled list with that injured thumb and he lost his shortstop job as the Ledmus Diaz has burst onto the scene with the Peralta injury. So when he came back he became the third baseman. Let's move Matt Carpenter over to first base. He's got a good problem to have when Aledmus Diaz returns to the lineup soon. Diaz is coming back quickly because the guy who's replaced him at short, Jed Jerko, is on a big tear since the All-Star break. Tough to sit 26 home runs on the bench. That's what he's been able to do. Jed Jerko, wow. I think a Jerko will play a little second base. And then you think about Greg Garcia and Colton Wong, and they've actually had Wong play a little outfield, an experiment that they tried this season. Three balls and a strike on Peralta. And he swings and fouls it back, three and two now. The Cardinals certainly have the pedigree, and that's one of the reasons why. You like their chances to make the postseason because of what they've been recently. The fact that they've made it to four straight postseasons under Matheny, and the year prior to Matheny's arrival, they won the World Series, 2011. Matheny took over in 12. Well, early in the season, I guess you'd be con concerned a little bit if you're, you know, Mike Matheny about the errors, the number of errors they made early in the year, but they cleaned that up quite a bit. Their home record not very good. Runner takes off, pitches up and in, ball four. Two on to start the inning for St. Louis. Single and a walk. And Cardinals seven games under 500 here at Bush Stadium. They're typically a very dominant team at home. Not this year, very good on the road. Cardinals have done everything to try to combat the home woes. They've changed batting practice times. They've changed the, the structure of their BP. They've taken infield on occasion, but the Cardinals, for whatever reason, are under 500 in their home ballpark, and that is unusual to say the least com compared to the season's past and all the success that they've had here. Yeah, they're hitting a lot more home runs. On the road, which is, you know, what you would expect given this ballpark. I mean, this ballpark is considered to be pretty fair as far as, you know, giving up home runs. Maybe that's one of the reasons the Cardinals rely heavily on the home run ball. Two men on, nobody out. We start the second inning, bottom of the second. Brewers got two runs in the top half on back to back homers from Santana and Arcia. Colton Wong batting eighth. Big swing and a miss, throw to second, and safe, barely. Arcia put a quick tag. And just that. back in time, Richard. Just love to watch Martin Maldonado behind home play. He is so quick. Getting rid of that baseball, and he was almost able to get Grichik at second base. Able to get that hand in there, barely, before Arcia 
slaps the tag. The Brewers are looking at it and they want to have him take a look at it. Let's check it out. Oh, he looks out. Yeah, he might be. Yeah, correct counsel saying go check it out. The four man umpiring crew in place. The tag there before the hand gets to the bag. Crew chief is Jerry Davis. And he'll make his way to the headset. Carlos Torres, the umpire at second base. Let's see where the tag is applied right here. And if it is the tag right there, he's out by plenty. Like a second base umpire missed it. So it's a worthy gamble here on the challenge. It would certainly change the complexion of the inning. Jerry Davis getting a quick answer from New York and out is the call. So it is overturned as Maldonado cuts down Randall Grichik. Man, he's something else. I mean, the way he gets rid of that baseball and a frozen rope to second base. There's your tag, and the hand is not in there yet. Good call. Well, Maldonado knew right away. Nice quick tag by Arcia. Took the throw right on the hip pocket of Grichik. So one away now. Oh, and two is the count with a runner at first. And a swing and a miss. Wong strikes out. Boy, how the inning changed in a two pitch window. And watch the feed from Maldonado, how quickly he gets himself in position to throw straight over the top. That ball does not move either way at all. I mean, a true line to second base and a lot on it. And not too many do it better than Maldonado. Maybe the guy in the Cardinals dugout. But they are both very good defensively. Now, while Molina has been great throughout his career and deserves all the accolades he gets and he's a surefire Hall of Famer. I think even Molina would admit he doesn't throw like Maldonado at this point of his career. He used to. Maldonado has so much of Yadier Molina in his game. Even down to the equipment that he wears. Maldonado's looked up to the Molina brothers growing up in Puerto Rico. And, uh, they have taken him under their wing. Garcia the pitcher pop up into foul territory that'll be in the seats and Maldonado this time around getting just about every day playing time he's been swinging the bat pretty well and his defense has been spot on he's been outstanding certainly making a case for an everyday job he's at the end of a contract although the Brewers do have the option in arbitration for the next couple of seasons with Maldonado but he did sign a two year deal. And he is in the second of that two year deal. Signed that deal to be the backup to Lucroy. Once Lucroy was traded, Maldonado got the starting nod. Garcia breaks his bat. Carter takes it off the shin, recovers, and out at first. Close play. Not sure Guerra got a toe on the bag. We're going to have to take a look at this one. I'm sure the Cardinals will want to look at this as well. Well, the ground crew is coming out, and uh, Mike Medini satisfied, I guess, that the call's right. That didn't take long. And so Medini says, no play on. Out at first, inning over. Maldonado cuts down a runner at second.
league. San Francisco has 50. That's the most. Now the Brewers record 19 and 26, of course. Last night a 2-1 win over the Cubs. He was talking to Craig Council about that today, and he said that one is just a tough one to explain, but he said what he does know is his team can learn a lot because there's a lot of different scenarios. You play a game tight to the very end. Your defense gets better. Your pitching is reflected. The Brewers' bullpen obviously has been very strong. And they won six of their last seven, a lot of close games as well. And their ERA overall, 229. That's the best in the majors over the last week. Yeah, it's been a nice run through this rotation, uh, Craig, as you look at the six man rotation and the first time you complete that rotation. And the Brewers don't figure to operate in a six man rotation as a norm moving into next season, but that's where it is right now with Guerra back in there. More teams are doing it. The Cubs are doing it right now as well as they prepare for the postseason and the day is coming old school pitchers cringe but the day is coming when the six man rotation is going to be a common part of the game as Guerra lines one in the right center that's going to get down and it's going to go to the wall and junior Guerra the Brewer pitcher just keeps on hitting this year came in with a 200 batting average the converted catcher can handle the bat a little bit at the plate. He's got a double to right center to start the third. Yep, and another pitch upstairs for Jaime Garcia, and that's when he makes his mistakes. When he gets pitches upstairs like that, and Junior Gary able to drive it all the way to the wall out there in the right center for a leadoff double, brings up the top of the order. Junior happy with that double, not thinking about a triple. Junior has seven hits on the season. Now seven for 31 at the plate. Here is VR with a runner at second and Jonathan takes a strike. Switch hitter hitting right handed against the lefty Garcia. And Jonathan VR made a little switch hitting history in Brewers franchise history last night with his home runs from each side of the plate. VR hit a game tying home run in the fourth inning or actually put the Brewers ahead in the fourth inning and then gave the Brewers the lead in the eighth. Both of those home runs were leading off innings. Became the fourth player in franchise history to homer from both sides of the plate in the same game. And the first time it's been done in the Miller Park era. Hadn't been done since Jose Valentin back in 1999. There's a bunt and a foul ball. No, he's out. VR runs into the baseball out of the box and he is put out and they're going to send Guerra back yep. to second and base. It's a dead ball. And Craig Council uh, coming out. Not sure that VR was completely out of the batter's box when that ball hit him. Jerry Davis on the call. Interference is not reviewable. He's got one foot in there. He got to have both feet in the box. Now for it to hit you and be a foul ball. He's on his way right here. I don't know. I think that uh, maybe Craig Council has a beef there. That's pretty close. That could have gone either way. It's not reviewable, as you said. Oftentimes, so home plate umpire will go to his umpires out in the field and they'll gather and. Try to get the call right. It's tough for an umpire to see, I think. You don't know exactly where contact is made, but Jerry Davis is sure. He's the crew chief, and the call is the call. So that'll be a two unassisted put out. Credit that to Molina behind the plate, the closest one to it. And you move Guerra back to second base. And that's the biggest part of that. You know, dead ball, Guerra not able to advance the third. First out of the inning. Keon Broxton had a base hit, an infield hit. It was a smash, though, to third base. Peralta was able to knock it down, but Broxton with a hit, and that one's up the middle, ranging over his jerko. The throw is not in time. Keon Broxton 
hustling down the line beats it out for an infield single and Jericho did a good job making it close I mean he got there and an off balance throw in the money and that's where you miss Oledmus Diaz he has got a cannon out there at shortstop but he's on a disabled list and another ground ball for Jaime Garcia this time Broxton able to beat it at first by just enough well, now you got Junior Garrett third base with only one out Well, Broxton, who made that great catch last night, has come out his first two at bats in this game with two hits. First and third for Ryan Braun. Braun takes a ball low. Ryan yesterday was two for three, drew a walk. Got his batting average up to 311, and Braun is just inside the top 10 in that category. He's tied for ninth. Daniel Murphy is the league leader in hitting at 345, second baseman for the Nationals. And Garcia with a really good move to first base, so knowing that Broxton likes to steal, it's going to be tough for Keon to get a jump. You got the good move from Garcia and Molina behind home plate. Brewers got two in the second inning back to back home runs with two outs Santana and Arcia and threatening for more in the third. It's another reason you like Guerra on the base pads a guy who has been a a hitter at the professional ranks not a complete liability on the bases or at the plate obviously he can hit a little bit but he knows what he's doing even his mannerisms as a base runner shows you that he was a position player the way he takes his leads and a throw to first he's always heads up for bad throws or wild pitches or pass balls he still has some of those instincts that he had as a position player you're right those are things that you know, a lot of pitchers you know pitchers on the bases are lacking not used to being out there. Been a long while. It's actually been a decade since he converted from a position player to the mound. That was with the Atlanta Braves. And the long wild ride after that would ensue as he tried to build up a pitching resume. Having his best season ever. Braun takes low, skips in. This is where when you're Keon Broxton, you don't want to be being too aggressive out on the bases. Last thing you want to do is get picked off or get caught stealing with Ryan Braun at the plate. You'd like to have Ryan finish this at bat. You know, one out, you got a man at third, he can drive it around with a fly ball. Just don't get picked off. He's got a big lead, and Garcia's got a terrific move. And he got a great throwing arm behind the plate in Molina. Two and one to count. Two and two. Braun coming up empty again. Braun named yesterday as the Brewers nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award. It was Roberto Clemente Day yesterday all across Major League Baseball. And he's thrilled at that honor. Second time he has been in that spot and the nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award in the last three seasons. Voting online right now, and Braun does great work. There goes Broxton. Braun swings and fouls one. And a good jump, too. And with two strikes, Ryan Braun has to protect the plate. Typically, when Keon runs, he makes it. He's only been caught twice. One of those occasions, he slid into the bag. His foot popped up off the bag on a pop up slide. And they tagged him out. So it was it actually went to a review. He's 21 for 23 in stolen bases. Has lightning speed. 2-2 two, two the count. There he goes. And Braun fouls another one off. Tenth year in the league for Ryan Braun, and he's turned into that 
The wise old sage in the clubhouse. <laughs> a lot of these players coming up to the big leagues for the first time and. One thing Ryan does well he's not a guy that talks a lot. He's not. A leader in that way. Certainly not a. A clubhouse sheriff by any stretch but he does. Let guys know. This is what. Talent looks like. As Broxton takes off and Molina will not bother. So steal number 22 for Keon Broxton. And he has certainly embraced that uh, leadership role. And it's not something that. Is bestowed upon you. It just happens in the clubhouse and. Somebody's got to take that role with the team. And Jonathan Lucroy was uh, flirting with that responsibility Prince Fielder before him and. And a lot of different guys but it's got to be an everyday player to be able to. Have that role as leader. Second and third now and the three two is in the air foul. Now one of the things that Braun does a lot he'll go to a player say uh, Keon Broxton or. I heard him with Jonathan VR early in the season and he'll say. What you're doing the way you play the way you swing the bat your skills. That's star level talent in the major leagues. And so he tries to make that connection for players who are still wondering what they are. As major leaguers. You can imagine how the confidence soars after that. Yeah. A guy who's seen it who's been at MVP who knows. What success looks like certainly knows what star power feels like as well. And he's been very complimentary of Keon Broxton and he's talked to Keon a lot. You could be an impact player in this game and even without that I mean Ryan Braun when he has a play to make he's going to hustle he's going to run out ground balls he's going to try and take that extra base. Those are the things that young players are looking at how are these superstars performing how do they act. Braun on the ground this is going to get a run home Jerko backs up long throw is a good one. And Braun is out however. A run is in. RBI on the ground out for Braun. And the Brewers lead three to one. And without the stolen base, that might have been a double play. And the Cardinals turn a lot of them. They turn the most in the National League. 148 double plays. Only the Rangers, Texas Rangers, have more in all of baseball. So the Keon Broxton stolen base leads to a run. And Keon ends up at third with two outs for Hernan Perez. Perez in the right center. That's big trouble for the Cardinals. That'll get to the wall. Broxton scores easily. And Perez with an RBI double swinging away at the first pitch. Four to one Milwaukee. Now they're doing exactly what you have to do against Garcia. And apparently what Garcia has been doing lately. He's lost his last three. And two of those three losses they pounded him pretty good. Another pitch up out over the plate. Perez does exactly what you have to do. Take it to the opposite field and drives in another run. So the Brewers with a couple of couple of innings with two runs on the board. Yep, I'd smile too. That's a nice approach. Perez coming off a four hit game on Tuesday, which was a career high. Did that against the Cubs. And he has carried it over on this road trip. RBI double sets up Chris Carter who takes strike one. Garcia's last three and all of them losses giving up two earned runs in six innings and a loss on Saturday in Cincinnati prior to that had given up 11 earned runs in his previous two starts much different pitcher than what the Brewers saw earlier in the season. Yeah we've seen this guy a lot. I mean this is his 20th start against Milwaukee and never have seen so many pitches. That he's left up in the strike zone. The Brewers are really getting good swings on. Just hasn't had that complete season, the full season. He's had windows of greatness as Garcia, as Perez takes off, and he'll steal third base. Pitch in the dirt. More and more teams are running on Molina these days, and the Brewers have two steals in this inning. Pretty uh, risky business trying to steal third base with two outs. Almost like a delayed steal. I mean, a couple of shuffle steps and able to get in there easily. Puts a runner at third with two away. And Carter able to check his swing. 
One and two the count. Last time up Carter popped up in the fair uh, foul territory. Carpenter made the catch. Over by the Cardinal dugout. Two and two. And that one misses outside. Full count to Carter. And a little frustration there for Garcia. He's won five of his last six starts against the Brewers. That eight inning one run game in his last start against Milwaukee back on July 1st. Carter sends one in the air shallow left center long run and that's going to be the second baseman Wong out there to make the catch that will end the inning no outfielders to be found Brewers get a couple of big hits including an RBI double off the bat of Hernan Perez and a two run third inning the Brewers now lead four to one. Expecting rain later, and it rained all day. But for game time, we are dry on the banks of the mighty Mississippi. Hernan Perez with an RBI double caps off a two run top of the third. And here we go to the bottom of the third. And it'll be Garcia, or rather Carpenter, to start it. Then Jerko, followed by Piscotti. Junior Guerra in each of the first two innings has put the first two runners on. And he's only given up the one run. Maldonado was a big part of his way out last inning. Picked off a runner at second base. Just another way you can help your pitcher get through an inning, right? Pick a guy off. That changed that inning quite a bit. Call on the field was safe. Council challenged and it was overturned. There's strike two on Carpenter. Well, any way you slice it, it's going to be a year to remember for Junior Guerra. Never been in this position in his career. And he's doing it at the major league level. There's a swing and a miss. Carpenter looks bad on a two strike offering from Guerra. I'm going to tell you, those first two strikes that he threw to Carpenter were right on the corners. I mean, they were perfect pitches. First pitch missed. Then he was able to catch the corner down in the zone on Carpenter and then give him the off speed pitch. 87 miles an hour down out of the strike zone and gets a swing and a miss. That's his second strikeout. One away, and here is Jed Jerko. Still boggles the mind what Garrett's been able to do, and I'm sure he doesn't want to think about it yet. But there will be a time when he looks back on his season. 
And this will be the year that he will always remember. Now he has never been a regular starting pitcher at any level of the minor leagues or when he was pitching overseas and pitching in Spain and in the Venezuelan Winter League. Carlos Subera has known Guerra since he was a catcher. Subero was with him on his Venezuelan Winter League teams. And he was the one who made the recommendation that Guerra A sign with the Brewers and that the Brewers sign him and then recommended to the Brewers that they make him a starter because he has so much to learn. He can really thrive between starts in that role. And because of the Brewers where they are in the rebuild, it was yeah. almost a perfect storm for him to get that chance. Fly ball into center field. Broxton is in. And actually Perez is back. The ball falls. And into second base is Jericho. Not sure what happened there. Well, I don't think Keon Broxton saw the baseball. And he came running in. Perez went out. I mean, he got out there a long way. And I don't think Keon ever saw the baseball. Let's check it out. I mean, watch his arms go up at some point here. Right there. He doesn't see it. He sees it finally now, but uh, kind of he thinks he, I think he spooked Perez a little bit. Doesn't see it up oh, there. It is. And Perez kind of stopped going after it, leaped for it, and that'll be a base hit. Oh well, no! Now they're going to score it as an error. That's a tough error to hang on air on Perez. Yeah, no I'll kidding. Tell you what, did he even touch it? He did, but. That's asking a lot, but it goes as an E4. And a runner at second for Piscotti. Well, it is that time of night, the twilight time of the night, even though there's a lot of cloud cover. And uh, with the lights up and as the ball gets into the air. But certainly a play Broxton should have made. He never saw it. And we were wondering why Randall Gritchick didn't catch that pop up to end the Brewers half of this inning and maybe that's why maybe he didn't see the baseball. Infield had to go back a long way to grab the pop up by Chris Carter. Yeah, Wong had to make that play from second base. That's what the center fielder is staring into. There's a line shot in the left field, a base hit. Jerko had to freeze on the liner. He'll stop at third. And suddenly the Cardinals threatening in this third inning. Two men aboard. Hey, make mistakes, and, you know, teams are going to make the most of it, particularly teams that are looking to get into the postseason. The Cardinals, very good offensive club. Hey, give them an inch, and they will tear you apart. Should have been two outs, nobody on, but with the error. Man at second and now Piscotti with a base hit. Hit too hard to score the run. First and third now. And here comes Yadier Molina. Guerra has had two men on in each of the first three innings. Good double play candidate right here, Yadier Molina. Grounds into a lot of them. 16 of them. That leads the Cardinals. Cardinals have won five out of their last six against Milwaukee, including a series win at the end of August. Took two out of three at Miller Park. Been a tough year for the Brewers against St. Louis all the way around. Brewers are four and eleven this year in the season series, and they are only one and five here at Bush. So they're hoping for a turnaround in this four-game series. Molina's in the driver's seat. Two and zero oh the count. Two on. Cardinals have them at the corners. The Brewers lead four-one. They've had back-to-back two-run innings. Home runs tonight from Santana and Arcia. Braun with an RBI ground out. Perez had an RBI double last inning. 
2 and 0 to Molina. On the ground, that's what you're looking for. Nice easy hop. And this is easy as it gets. 6-4-3 double play. Guerra gets around another inning with two on. Here we go to the fourth. Domingo Santana will lead off. He and Arcia went back to back in the second. They are the first two up as we go to the fourth inning. That'll be 11 games in total. And our Carsu.com trivia, who are the three active players with a 15-plus home run and 50-plus stolen base season? That's a good question. And we know one of them is right there. Jonathan VR, who's hit exactly 15 home runs and has 52 stolen bases on the season. So there are two others we're looking for. Active players. VR is putting together some really terrific numbers across the board and what he's been able to accomplish this season offensively. Yeah, it's been a terrific season and you really didn't know what you're going to get out of him. You know coming into spring training he knew he was going to be at shortstop and nobody knew a whole lot about what he could bring to the table. It's been a uh, a nice surprise. I mean he can concentrate on some of the negatives with VR but you know the positive I think far outweigh the, the negatives some of the base running mistakes and the errors and he has been a catalyst to this offense that's been pretty good as of late Domingo Santana leads off for the crew Santana Arcia Maldonado coming up and this was where the game turned a little bit for the Brewers early they're down one nothing Santana hit a rocket out of here to center field 440 foot homer and then Rivera, or rather, uh, Arcia followed with a home run. Lot to be hopeful about watching these baby brewers go to work every day. This has been a fun ride for Milwaukee. I will say this over the last, you know, five, six weeks, we've seen a lot of series uh, with teams that are in contention and there isn't a team out there right now that's hustling and playing harder than this Brewers team. There's no doubt about that. These guys have a lot to play for. 3 2 swung on and missed, and Santana is down on strikes. So Jaime Garcia with his second strikeout. And here comes Garcia now. Popped his third home run of his young big league career. Opposite field home run is. First two home runs were of the pole variety. Powerball home run number three for Orlando. And it's his game going to right field, but the, the league started to pitch him inside. He started to make that adjustment. And hit a couple of home runs to left field. Arcia rated as the top prospect in the Brewers system. 
which is a minor league system that by most accounts and most publications is in the top three and many of those publications have them as number one. And the Brewers have certainly acquired a heap of prospects over the last couple of seasons started in the Doug Melvin era and the trade with the Astros and then David Stearns the new general manager picked up and Brewers continue to add to that group. Yeah, big difference a year can make right. A lot of good young talent down in the minor leagues some of it here most of it not. I've been around organizations with great minor league systems and there is nothing more energizing than a minor league system and I'm not talking about when you're rebuilding or you're down in the standings when you have a good team and you're contending and then you're able to supplement with highly rated prospects Cardinals have been enjoying that success for a while as Arcia lines one to center field a base hit Boy, he turned that one around in a hurry Stand back nicely on this pitch a fastball from Garcia trying to get it to tail away but left it up a little bit and rips it into center field so a home run to right a line drive single to center and he's starting to come around offensively you can tell just a different body language up at the plate right now he's only been in the big leagues since August 2nd just a little over a month at 267 in triple A had eight homers. 53 RBIs. He also stole 15 bases down there. And he's got a stroke back here in the last two weeks. And just turned 22. Let's not lose focus on his age. A lot to learn. Maldonado with a chance to move him here in the fourth. One out. Pitcher due up next. But these days with Junior Guerra as the pitcher. You feel pretty good about Guerra at the plate if Maldonado could deliver RC into a scoring position. Guerra already has a double tonight. He doubled and scored in the third. Maldonado has six home runs this year. All against right handed pitching believe it or not. In the dirt Molina keeps that in front somehow. Make good soft hands doesn't always have to go down and block pitches kind of like Johnny Bench used to do. Just kind of reach it on the backhand able to get enough of it to keep it close. He's kind of ruined it for a lot of catching instructors. <laughs> But there's always the answer when you get the response. Well, Yadier Molina doesn't do it that way. Exactly. There's a drive in the left field. That ball is hit well. And that's over the head of Moss. That'll bounce out a ground rule double, which is actually going to hurt the Brewers in this case. Arcia certainly would have scored on that. But Maldonado rips one on a hop into the bullpen. Second and third with one away now. And just one pitch up in the zone after another. That one on the outer half. Maldonado able to hook it hard out in left field over the head of Moss. Unfortunately, bounces into the Brewers bullpen, or that would have been another run. RC was flying around the bag at second. So second and third now. Here is Guerra. Brewers get back to back hits. The Cardinals bring their infield in. And Guerra, a little slow roller foul. Guerra handles the bat very well and even not just swinging the bat, but he bunts very well. So it'll be heads up maybe for a bunt, maybe a sac or a suicide squeeze. Maybe the safety squeeze. We'll see. And a pitch out. The Cardinals think it along the same lines with you, partner. Matheny orders the pitch out. Nothing on. Might do it again. A 
Garcia deals. Guerra takes a ball. Well, and his first at bat took one on the outer half and drove one into the gap and hit the wet outfield and shot straight to the wall. A leadoff double for Guerra in the third inning. Two and one. Guerra waves and misses. Two two now. Showing a little respect for Junior, giving him a breaking pitch, a slider. That double by Guerra in the third, just his second career extra base hit. Two to the count. Infield is in. And Guerra strikes out, but the pitch gets by Molina, and here comes Arcia. And the Brewers score another one. Guerra forgot to run to first, and so Molina throws him out. Well, if Guerra takes off right away, he's yeah. going to be safe at yeah, first. He's safe. He kind of lost uh, track of what was going on. He was more concerned about waving Arcia to home plate than running to first base. First base unoccupied. Ball not caught, and you can take first base. Let's watch Junior. He sees the ball get by him, and now he's waving on Arcia and forgets about running to first base. <laughs> got a multitask, Junior. It's got, there, there is a there is a small instinct in there from a position player to bring the runner in, but that's usually the on deck hitter after a base hit. Guerra forgot to run. All that praise we're heaping on him about. Not acting like a pitcher at the plate, and uh, he just blew that up. But <laughs> it's all right. A run scores, and it's five to one Brewers. I think that's what they're uh, getting on him in the dugout. <laughs> Wave him on as you run to first base. <laughs> right. Runner at third, two outs now. Top of the order, VR. Mentioned some of those numbers on VR and. How good he has been across the board. So Jonathan VR is now one of 10 major leaguers going back to 1913 with a stat line of 15 homers, 50 stolen bases, and 65 walks in a season. Mm. So there have been 10 to do it. The last was 2008, Jose Reyes, when he was a Met. Add the walks in there, huh? Makes yeah. it even a smaller group. Interesting. And there's a walk. So I'm not sure how long this is uh, gonna. And here comes Mike Matheny now. This is not Jaime Garcia's night. And Matheny is gonna make the change. He's got Miguel Sokolovich ready in the bullpen. And an early hook. Garcia cannot get through the fourth inning. Three and two thirds, five runs are in. And his night is over. We'll set up the new hurler when we continue. Brewers off to a great start in game one of the road trip.
pitching change for the Cardinals. With Broxton coming up, Carson.com trivia: the three active players with 15 plus, 50 plus in a season: Jose Reyes, Hanley Ramirez, and now Jonathan VR on that list. Pretty good names on that list. Ramirez, I think that was as a shortstop with the Marlins when he accomplished that feat. New pitcher Rock Miguel Sokolovic on the mound, a native of Venezuela, and on for the eighth time. And one and oh, he did. Uh, he picked up a win at Milwaukee back at the end of August when the Cardinals were at Miller Park. So bullpen at it early for the St. Louis Cardinals tonight. Keon Broxton takes strike one. Keon at the plate tonight, presented by Wendy's. Two hits. It's two for two. Both of his hits have been infield singles. Also has a stolen base and a run scored. Broxton hit a bullet in the first inning over to third base. Peralta on the backhand knocked it down but couldn't gather it up to make a play. And then Broxton went up the middle in the third inning. And was able to leg it out. Jerko couldn't get the throw to first in time. But the speedy Broxton. A couple of infield hits. There goes VR. A strike is called and a stolen base for Jonathan VR. The Brewers are running wild tonight. They're getting good jumps. That's what they do. And nobody stole more bases in the National League than the Milwaukee Brewers. Number 53 for VR. Third of the night for Milwaukee. Perez, VR, and Broxton. Billy Hamilton still leads the league in steals with 58. And now VR with 53. Second and third, two outs. Sokolovich facing Broxton and that one way outside ball two. Here's a 2 2 and a strikeout. Broxton is down. Inning is over, but the Brewers score a run and they chase the starter, Garcia. 5 1 Milwaukee. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Five to one lead now over the Cardinals, and it's time now for our T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball. Some news and notes around the league, and Steven Strasburg 
Forced to leave last night's game from the Nationals and an MRI reveals today a strained flexor mass. No timetable on his return. So a big blow there for the Nationals. Carlos Santana homers today and the Indians win over the Astros. They stay real tight for the best record in the AL with the Rangers and Tim Tebow signed a minor league contract with the Mets. He'll begin his career in the fall instructional league that starts in mid September but he's uh, already been granted days off to keep that broadcasting career going guys that'll be an interesting uh, one two punch there yeah, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm all for it good for Tim Tebow already asking for time off <laughs> exactly I mean come I on. think he asked for that was the going in he's got a career yeah, it's but, instructional you know, league it, rock still come, come on, on. <laughs> you want to be a ball player don't you hey he's got to hedge his bets and uh, he's he's got a contract to uh, call SEC football so great story good for him and the Mets take a chance certainly a lot of novelty to that as Brandon Moss cuts and misses but I like what Sandy Alderson said uh, the fact that Tebow will see how he can play he is 29 years of age uh, there's a lot to ask I personally don't think he'll ever have success in the major leagues but right. I'm not sure that's that's only the point. That doesn't mean he won't get a chance. Let's put it that way, just because of who he is. And I think baseball should certainly embrace the notion. Players get their feathers ruffled up a little bit, but it's great to know that some of the great athletes out there and name athletes in other sports want to play the game. They're going to find out how hard it is. Moss sends this one into left center. That's playable for Broxton. And he's got it. Some interesting uh, angles and plays in the outfield for the Brewers tonight. Ryan Braun, Keon, Broxton both going after it. I think the uh, the reach for Broxton is why he caught it. it must be hard to hear out there. Certainly a different environment. And a lot more space to cover, a lot more ground to cover than Miller Park. Randall Gritchick takes one inside. I guess the weather perhaps has uh, affected the crowd here tonight. Maybe so. You normally you see this place filled to capacity. The Cardinals are trying to get into the postseason. Well, they have sold 40,000 tickets, but I think a lot of folks decided to watch this one on television. Richard in a 1 1 count. Singled his last time up off Guerra. Oh, pretty good breaking ball, and Richard didn't bite on it. 2 and 1. Richard has settled into the everyday center field role with the Cardinals now. He's at 22 homers this season. Spent some time in the minor leagues earlier this year. Got a big cut and a foul. Gritchick pops this one up. Arcia will make the call. And the shortstop makes the catch for out number two for Junior Guerra. Well, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app, take Fox Sports Wisconsin and Brewers baseball with you wherever you go. It's the modern day transistor radio. Yeah. Watch the game, get highlights, get Brock's great analysis. That's what you can't live without. Five to one Brewers tonight. Peralta on the first pitch, fouls it away. Johnny Peralta, who walked his first time up. Another guy that missed a significant time early in the season. And for the Cardinals. Probably their best offensive player last year. He's playing in only a 61st game of the year tonight. Peralta.
Peralta had a great year last year. There was a lot of question marks around his signing. Cardinals needed a shortstop though, coming off a, a PED suspension as a member of the Tigers. Had a big year last year though for St. Louis. Now a three time all star. He turned 34 in May. Hit 275 a year ago with 17 homers and 71 driven in. And he played in 155 games last season. This is the third year of a four year contract he signed with St. Louis. Yeah, played shortstop, gave an opportunity to a Ledmus Diaz, and look what happened with Diaz. Outstanding year for him before he got hurt. That's ball four. Peralta draws the walk. Second time he has walked. Only two walks that Guerra has allowed, and a man on with two outs. Visit to the mound. Garris pitch count at 58. Pretty good shape. He's going to be on a strict pitch limit under 100 today for sure. Just his second start since coming off the DL. Last time out, he had 70 pitches in three and one third innings of work. Didn't give up a run of those three and a third, but a lot of pitches. Two outs for Colton Wong. Wong, the 25 year old from Hawaii, former first rounder by the Cardinals in 11. Be careful here, he's got some pretty good pop in that bat. Got the pitcher spot coming up, but you ready to see. Matt Adams on deck. Wave and a miss, and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, but tonight, Garrett has much better command of the split change than he did his first time out after being on the disabled list. But that goes to that, that triggers because those all speed pitches sometimes take a while to come back. And there's a balk, but the ball's in play, and Wong sends one out. Shot with two outs in the fourth, and the Cardinals are right back in it. Makes it five to three, Milwaukee. Yep, left the splitter up in his own. Three straight splitters. This one on a no two pitch, and Colton Wong gives it a ride. You see the ball he didn't stop he got to come set and then come to home plate but that point is moot after Wong hits one into the Cardinals bullpen. It's essentially a free play for an offense if Wong lines out or strikes out or whatever the case may be then you take the ball and you start over again in, a, in the same count. But the ball is live and Wong sends it out. So no balk officially recorded and that's going to change the thinking here of Mike Matheny as Jeremy Hazelbaker will now hit instead of Matt Adams. 400 foot home run by Colton Wong. And just couldn't get that splitter down out of the strike zone. That's where you want it in the dirt. Left it up. There have been three home runs hit in this game with two outs. Brewers went back to back in the second with Santana and Arcia. Hazel Baker on the first pitch to Carter, and that will retire the side. But St. Louis, the top home run hitting team in the National League, gets one from their second baseman, and it's 5 3.
Wisconsin is brought to you by Pupi and Abraham. 1-800-800-5678. Pupi and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Back in St. Louis, we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Brewers out in front five to three. They have eight hits in this game already in the St. Louis pitching staff. A string of six straight games where they've allowed at least 10 hits. They're on their third pitcher already tonight. Garcia not looking strong, obviously already knocked out of the game, guys. All right, Craig, thanks. And the Cardinals go to Mike Myers in their bullpen. His third appearance of the season. And the Brewers will have Ryan Braun to start it. Aaron Perez, then Chris Carter, 5-3. And a lot of offense in this game. That is the third two run inning of the game for each of these teams. And Myers last appeared a couple of days ago at Pittsburgh. Picked up a win in that game through a scoreless inning. And no shortage of arms for either one of these two managers here tonight. Ryan Braun will start it fifth inning from Bush Stadium. Braun has made two outs rolling to the shortstop two very different results though. First ground ball to short ended up in an inning ending double play in the first. And then in the third inning a ground ball to short produced a run. Braun's 80th RBI of the season. Oh look out Braun hit by a pitch. Myers comes up and in and drills him to start the fifth inning. Braun does not get hit much. He stands off the plate so far. You got to miss badly to hit Braun. That's only the fourth time all year he's been hit by a pitch. Yeah, he does stand off the plate. There's no chance for him to get out of the way. Although he did turn into it, so really no harm, no foul there. Easy for me to say. Well, let's see if Braun's on the move now. The Brewers have three stolen bases already. Here's Hernan Perez, who drove in a run with a double his last time. And that one's in the right. That's going to get down a base hit. Braun will make the turn and head to third. And Hernan Perez keeps hitting. Well, he's something else. I mean, he will turn on one if you throw it inside, but any pitch that's down the middle or middle away, he is going to drive it in the right field. Right, back to back hits for Perez. One in the right center. This one right down the line and right. He got it down on the trademark just a little bit, but. Dumps it down there in the line and right, and Ryan Braun able to come around to third base. Able to cruise on into third. Uh, Brewers set up nicely in the fifth. Good start to the inning here. A walk, a single, first and third, nobody out for Carter. Cardinals get two runs with a two out homer by Colton Wong, a two run home run. And now the Brewers trying to get him right back. Brewers have nine hits already. As we play in the fifth with nobody out. Oh and two on Carter. Got a pretty good fastball as Myers pretty straight but 95 miles an hour with that last one. Got a slider to go with it. Chris Carter on the Powerball home run leaderboard with 33. Third in the league in that category. Nolan Arenado hit one last night. He's got 37 to lead the league. And Carter sends out one in the deep right center. Plenty deep to score the run. And here comes Braun, and the Brewers get one of the runs back. It is 6 3 Milwaukee as Carter delivers with a sacrifice fly. Yeah, that's good work on a no two pitch. 
Yeah, Carter were able to get a pitch that was up in the strike zone and drive it deep enough in the right field. So able to drive in a run on an 0 2 pitch our Badger mutual insurance run of the game. And hopefully that will not be the last one tonight. Carter with 79 RBIs now. One behind Ryan Braun. So now Perez at first for Santana. Bouncer to short. Jerko goes to the bag. The turn and the throw is in time. Double play ends the inning. 6 4 3 double play. Santana with a double play ball to end the fifth. Brewers get a run though. Brewers Community Foundation is asking you to join them for an evening with Hank Aaron on September 24th at Miller Park. Funds raised will support Hank Aaron's Chasing the Dream Foundation, which helps children with extraordinary talent to achieve their dreams. This annual event is always a crowd pleaser and sells out quickly, so go to brewers.com slash BCF to register today. And his former teammate, as I take you on this throwback Thursday, how about this date to 1963, Warren Spahn, with his 13th, 20th win season. He went 23 and 7 that year when he was 42 years old. How about oh, that? Yeah. What a great name. That's, that's a name that just puts a smile on your face. When you think about Milwaukee baseball, Warren Spahn, and yeah. a whole generation of folks who grew up with the Milwaukee Braves and. Good one, Craig. Yeah, but the evening with Hank, I mean, anytime Hank Aaron's in a room, I mean, you got to go. I mean, that's an. An amazing event Just to be in the same room with Hank Aaron. Talk about commanding respect and commanding a room. Hank Aaron. 0-2 pitch to Carpenter. Aaron misses inside. Uh, Hank loves Milwaukee. Loves Wisconsin. It's where his professional career started in the minor leagues in the uh, Milwaukee Brave system, and has more home runs in Milwaukee than he does. In Atlanta, believe it or not, man. of course, his final home run came as a Milwaukee Brewer. Still a plaque down on the ground in the parking lot at Miller Park. Bob Uecker uh, roomed with Hank Aaron for a while. Imagine there's some interesting stories there. 2-2 <laughs> to Carpenter misses a little bit low. Garrett wanted that pitch. Count goes full now. Carpenter, Jerko, Piscotti, Cardinals are at the top of their order. Third time through the batting order against Junior Guerra. Then stake to a 6 3 lead. The Brewers have scored in each of the last four innings two in the second, two in the third, single runs in the fourth and the fifth. And that goes tack on run, very important. Especially when you're playing an offensive team like St. Louis. 
Carpenter had a double and a run scored in the first inning. Garris struck him out his last time up. And that ball is hit hard to center field. Boxton is there. Out number one, Carpenter retired. Hey, let's check out tonight's Tower of the Game winner. Casey's on the Ave in South Milwaukee, if they call the Brewers. By 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, they get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Light Beer Pen for April or April or April or May of next year. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Light. He didn't realize how tough of a word April is. There's a fly ball to right. Santana eases over and he's got it for the out. Did I say April or May, right? I don't think it was the April that got you, partner. What was it? I think it was the or after the April. April or May. I didn't pause enough, did I? It's uh, don't be so hard on yourself. You know what? I, I thought I, you pulled out of that no, nicely. No, I'm going to hold on to this card. I want to read it again. <laughs> April Later. or April or May. As opposed to the April air cooling machine. Now you're going to be really messed up. You got uh, one of those fancy things on your heater, do you? <laughs> I do. I figured. Got to. I love those things. I get dry. You know, things get dry in the wintertime. Important in the those. winter, yeah, things dry out. <laughs> get, get some moisture in the house. April uh, or May? There you go. That's what makes you lovable, Rock. <laughs> Among other things. There's a liner over the glove of Carter in the right field, a base hit. Piscotti has had a good night. And two outs, nobody on. Happened last inning. Piscotti with two hits, has a sack fly. Pretty impressive swing right there on a the pitch down and away. Hits it hard, liner over the head of Carter. Two outs, nobody on. The Cardinals picked up a couple of runs in the fourth. Had a walk and a two run homer by Wong last inning. Now Molina's up there. It was a big play in the game for Guerra. He got Molina to bounce into a double play to end the third. And that one's on the ground. Gobbled up by VR. Easy way to second. And the inning is over. And Junior Guerra is through five. The Brewers have a 6 3 lead. Five in the books at Bush Stadium. As we go to the sixth inning, the Brewers are coming up. And a reminder to join Fox Sports Wisconsin for the first ever give back game Sunday, September 25th. Tickets start at $10 and help four local charities, including the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee, which provides safe places for youngsters to learn and play. Visit Brewers.com slash give back game for more information. 
Fox Sports Wisconsin and the Brewers putting on a give back game. Last home game of the 2017 schedule. Yep. Pirates yep. Reds coming in for the final home stand of the year. 2016. I'm sorry. I got a year ahead of myself. I was already ready for the 17 schedule. Fired up. That should be out pretty soon, huh? Mm -hmm. Maybe we get an advanced copy. Arcia swing and a miss. And he's down 0 2 to start this sixth inning. Myers is still in. Pitching in his second inning. Garcia was an early exit. Three and two thirds for the left hander. Five runs. And now Arcia with another base hit. Orlando with his third hit of the night. And they have all come to the right side. Had a home run in the second. Now back to back singles and a three hit game for the rookie. Yep, and that uh, batting average continues to climb for Arcia. They're off to a very slow start, but up over 230 now, and that's a beautiful swing. I mean, just trying to lay the bat on the baseball, getting on top of it, dumps it into right. Let's see if uh, Arcia might be thinking about a stolen base. Arcia had 15 steals in AAA, and he's on the move, and Maldonado. Fouls it away. That might have been a good old fashioned hit and run right there. Maldonado would be the guy you do it with. Mm -hmm. But you don't see that play very often anymore. Why is that, partner? So what happened to the hit and run? About back control. There's too many swings and misses these days and ends up running into outs. Typically, you don't get as good a jump at first base on a hit and run. You want to make sure your pitcher goes to home. No balls in a strike. Maldonado a wave and a miss. Somewhat of a uh, lost art. The art of the bat control. Dumping one into the hole between first and second with a runner at first on the move. Not too many prettier plays in baseball. No. It's, it's art when it's executed yeah. perfectly. Cardinals will use the hit and run typically with Molina at the plate. They're one of the few teams that still uses it. That ball is deep. Maldonado sends one way back. Goodbye. A home run. Martin Maldonado with a two run shot. And the Brewers add to their lead. It is now eight to three Milwaukee. Hey and a Brewer fan coming up with that home run ball. That one an 2 pitch and Maldonado. That's about as far as we've seen Maldonado hit one. An 0 2 pitch from Myers and that's some nice insurance a slider that was middle in and check it out not a very good 0 2 pitch Maldonado able to get good extension on it and Brewers now with a five run lead and now here's Guerra that's down the line just past the dive of Carpenter and Guerra the pitcher with two hits tonight he's two for three and three straight hits to start the inning off Myers. Pitching coach Derek Lilliquist. Can't believe it. He has that look as his pitchers have allowed eight runs on 12 hits. It's been a rough season for the Cardinals pitching staff. They're around the middle of the pack in the National League and earned run average. That's unusual for them. They're usually top five at least. They've been out slugging people. VR at the plate. Three consecutive hits to start the inning. Back to the top of the order now. VR batting for the fourth time. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. On the ground, that's through a base hit. Four consecutive hits to start the inning for the Brewers. And yeah. now the big bopper's coming up. Out of the order has been very productive tonight. You think about all the hits that they've been able to produce. Seven hits. Seven, eight, and nine in the batting order. Yeah, Guerra, the pitcher with two of them. He scored a run. Seven hits and five runs scored from the bottom of that order. Arcia, Maldonado, Guerra. Brewers have 13 hits now. And we're only in the sixth inning. They have scored in every inning of this game with the exception of the first. Q 
Kikafer getting loose now. The left-hander just started throwing. So it'll be at least one more hitter for Myers. Keon Broxton a chance to drive in a run. Got the pitcher running at second Guerra. Great speed in VR. Keon with two hits tonight two out of three scored a run. Brewers were able to out slug the Cubs on Tuesday night. Won a tight one last night two to one pitchers duel. And they're back to banging here tonight. Yeah, but for the most part, these guys have been scoring a lot of runs as of late. Starting that Pirate series. Brewers swept the Pirates. Just took two out of three from the Cubs. They beat the Cardinals in the final game of that series in Milwaukee. After they had lost six straight and Broxton draws the walk the beat goes on five consecutive base runners for Milwaukee in the sixth inning and now the bases are loaded and here comes Matheny and back to the bullpen he will go Myers runs into trouble in this sixth inning. So the Brewers winners of six of their last seven with a lead here in St. Louis tonight. Eight three Milwaukee and a pitching change coming up. Five batters have reached base, four hits to start the inning, then a walk, and a pitching change for Mike Matheny with Ryan Braun coming up. He goes to Dean Kikafer, the left hander. And Ryan Braun, a chance to do some big damage here. Yeah, look at the numbers for Kikafer against right handed batters. I mean, a 357 opponent batting average, he's got that 514 ERA. Kikafer, one of three left handers down in the bullpen for St. Louis, one of them a former Brewer, Zach Duke. Kikafer is the fourth pitcher used. Right handers hitting 357 off of him in those 16 appearances. That's a small sample size. Braun hits lefties very well, always has. So this is a favorable matchup. Athene must want some length out of Kikafer. Michael Blazik is the runner at third base. That's interesting. Running for the pitcher, Guerra. He probably wants to go to the bullpen. Jan Mariñez is in the bullpen. So Guerra's night is over. 
not wanting to burn a position player. You got a man on your roster who is not throwing right now in Blazik, but he does run well. Yeah, well, just use him. He's not going to be used out of the bullpen. Why not? And Braun sends one to right. Blazik will get his turn. He's going to tag. He'll have plenty of time to score. All three runners tag. All three advance. And the Brewers add to it. 9 3 Milwaukee on Braun's second RBI of the game. Gives him 81 for the season. And, and Blazik scores a run. Yeah, and both of them coming on out. Right, he down to do shortstop in the third inning. That scored a run. Now they sacrifice fly. Michael Blazik in a box score now. Well, the Brewers are having some fun tonight at the Cardinals' expense. Perez up there. That was the first out of the inning. The infield is in. And Perez could offer up a put away punch right here in the sixth inning. Three runs are in. The infield in for St. Louis. Got great speed on the bags. So you gotta love the way these guys are playing ball right now. No kidding. Playing I mean, hard. That's what I'm saying. I mean, playing a lot of playoff caliber teams and teams trying to get to the postseason, and they're out hustling them. They might not have the most talent every night, but there's no team that is out, out hustling these guys. They're playing hard, they're focused. I wonder how long Blazik's going to keep the batting gloves on. He's kind of, you know, milking it, getting some water, batting gloves on. Yeah. I just scored a run. This inning continues, you might get in that bat. Good point. He has never scored a run in the big leagues, by the way, if you're wondering. Yes, he has. Wait a minute. This time. Oh, tonight. Until tonight. I get what you're saying. Maybe I didn't say that right. There was a comma in there before you cut me off. Yeah, okay. I was actually looking at his minor league batting statistics. Because I'm fascinated to know the last time he scored a run at all. That would have been 2014 with Nashville, the yeah. last time he scored a run. Check him out. He's got the wrist taped. He just <laughs> finally took the batting gloves off. Yeah. <laughs> Walking around there like a hitter. Perez, a base hit in the left center. And this is going to bring in two runs. Aaron is on his way to second. And he is in there with a belly flop double. Look at him hustle. Boy, the Brewers are pouring it on now. 11 to 3 Milwaukee as Perez with his second double of the night. Three runs batted in for the game. And three hits in the game as well. Uh, just a beautiful approach by Ernan hey. Perez on a two strike pitch. It was a full count. Goes down and gets it. Nice short stroke. And with the infield in over the head of Jerko. And both runs able to score. And check out Perez. As soon as he hits his baseball, he's thinking double. Takes a good turn around first base. And able to head first slide into second. Still only one out. Chris Carter at the plate. 11 to 3 now 14 hits for Milwaukee. This is the third double digit run output the Brewers have had. In the last five games right. They scored 10 in a 10 nothing win over the Pirates. Last Sunday. They won 12 to 5 on Tuesday. And they've got 11 on the board tonight, and we're only in the sixth inning. And this has been a total team effort offensively. Everybody up and down the batting order contributing. Maybe a night council can. Step off the gas a little bit. Brewers have been playing a lot of close games. Still a lot of baseball left in this one. Yeah, right. I mean, we've seen a lot of comebacks for the Cardinals, so you got to keep the pedal to the metal. You got to keep swinging the bat, scoring runs. 
If you're wondering, the most runs the Brewers have scored in a game is 15. That was in a win against Arizona. Most hits the Brewers have had in a game, 19 in that same game against Arizona. Right now they're they're at 11 and 14 in the sixth inning. Yeah. That's a busy total board. Santana do next. His home run started it all. Put the Brewers on the board for the first time in the second inning. Carter pops it up. Carpenter will give it a look. And out of his reach. Is he yelling, I got it? The foul ball I like can't he hear him. In Milwaukee. It's a good call. I can't hear him here, of course. He's doing that. Every foul ball that went into the seats over the first base dugout, he was yelling, I got it. Even foul balls that were going up into the lows level. Right, right. I got it. I got it. Right. Seems like only yesterday that happened. Talk about a guy that plays hard. This right. guy right here, yep. gamer. He is the Lead. ideal leadoff man. Brewers might have found their leadoff hitter for the next few years. They hope anyway. Jonathan Br. Carter rips one into left field. That's right at Moss, and that is the second out. Carter hit it hard, but he's the guy in the lineup tonight with all this hitting going on. He is without a hit, although he does have a sack fly. There's usually one. Two outs now. Here is Domingo Santana's. The Brewers bat around in a five run sixth inning. Santana. Check out the pace on this one. He roasted one to center field. 440 feet, and it was out of here like a flash. That tied the game at one. Yeah, Jaime Garcia, the starting pitcher tonight, didn't last very long. Couldn't get out of the fourth inning. One of the few times the Brewers have belted him around the ballpark. He's had been tough on Milwaukee. ERA coming in against the Brewers this year in three starts. 1.23. One of seven games on the schedule tonight in the big leagues. Thursday for a lot of teams is a travel day. Everybody will be in action tomorrow again. There is a final in. Craig mentioned it earlier. But the Indians, the surging Indians, beat the Astros 10 to 7. Trevor Bauer got the win. That great pitching staff in Cleveland. Cleveland division leaders in the AL Central. They're trying to write their own story. No World Series title since 1948 for the Indians. Cavaliers won the NBA championship. They're starting to call Cleveland Believeland right now. After LeBron James and company yeah. won the NBA championship and Terry Francona's Indians starting to feel the same way. They've got a very good ball club and they made one of the key acquisitions picking up Andrew Miller. He's been lights out out of their bullpen. So they won today. They're at 81 victories now. Santana in the left field. That's going to fall a base hit. And here comes Perez. He will score. And the beat goes on for the Brewers. 12 to 3. Santana with an RBI single. His second hit gives him two RBIs for the game. And it's a six run inning for Milwaukee. And another 3 2 pitch that the Brewers are able to do some damage. And we saw Aaron Perez on a 3 2 pitch. He hit a double. Here's another 3 2 pitch. Santana goes down and gets it, and Perez able to score, run number 12. Wow, 
Oh, what a performance here. Now Arcia in the right field, hit well, and it is caught by Piscotti. Arcia making a bit of his fourth hit of the game. What a performance offensively tonight, and it all started on an 0-2 pitch. Two-run home run by Maldonado. Perez picked up a couple himself, and the Brewers score six, and now lead at 12-3. Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by Bank of America, life's better when we are connected. Lights are up on a Thursday night and the Brewers are banging away in St. Louis. 12 runs on 15 hits tonight. A 12-3 lead, the Brewers just scored six runs in the sixth inning. And it'll be Jan Mariniez on the pitch for the Brewers. Guerra is out. He is in line for the win. Guerra, with five strong innings, continues to pitch well in his comeback. Yeah, 37th appearance for Mariniez. He's been outstanding since he's joined the Brewers. A 316 earned run average. Pitched on Monday against the Chicago Cubs at Miller Park. He'll face Brandon Moss to start it. Brewers have scored in. Every inning tonight, with the exception of the first, and capped it off with a six run frame in the top of the sixth inning. Mariniz trying to make this quick and get this one to the finish line before the rains come tonight. Nice to have a 12 3 lead with pending rain, however. Yeah. As you get into the late innings, it's an official game. Not that we want to sit through hours and hours of rain delays. Well, they told us before the game they thought a front was coming in at 8:15. The front is late. Thankfully. Loss a liner right to the shortstop Arcia who was over on the shift. I'd like to know what the exit velocity was on that. <laughs> that was a bullet. Arcia gives it a little spice to the end. Didn't, didn't even have to move for it. There's high entertainment value with Arcia defensively. That right his tracks. <laughs> I mean, he could have just stuck his glove up there and caught it. Give with a little bit. Yeah, a little give and yeah, so a snatch. Nice and soft hands. It's much more entertaining that way. Randall Gretchik on the first pitch fouls it back. Came off the bat at 100 miles an hour. 
you're out there and you wonder, there is a discrepancy between the the Fox system for measuring velocity off the bat versus the Statcast system. Remember back in the old days, Rock, the difference between the ray gun and the Jugs gun. Yeah. You never hear that anymore. There's no ray gun anymore. But there were two different radar guns to measure pitching velocity, and they were they were a lot different. Yeah. yeah. One was uh, velocity out of the hand. The other was velocity when it got to home plate. And that's the difference. So you'd see a guy throws 95 miles an hour and they'd say, well, is, he, is that the jugs gun or the ray gun? Because <laughs> if he's throwing 95 on a ray gun, he's probably throwing 97, 98 you on know, a jugs gun. You know, back, uh, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, you didn't see too many guys rushing it up there at 98 miles an hour. I think that had a lot to do with the gun, as you mentioned, the guns that they were using. Marinia has just uh, flipped one up there at 97 miles an hour. <laughs> Anybody that was getting in 92, 93, that was bringing it. it. Really was. Yeah. You know, it's a lot different these days. There's a foul ball. Gritchick taking a look at his bat. I don't know if you can say the radar gun has helped the game at all. I think it's a great tool to measure and we love to see those big numbers pop up on the board. But to be honest I think the radar gun has done a lot to hurt the game. It's done a lot to hurt pitchers. It's done a lot to excite the crowd. They crank them up a little bit. You get into triple digits. There's a famous story about the uh, the New York Mets remember John Rocker the closer of the yeah, Braves yeah. when he was rolling closing games for Atlanta and they played a lot of games against the Mets they were great rivals at that point well the you had to manually input the number of the the velocity of the pitch they would get the velocity from the radar gun and then they input it manually and it'd go up on the scoreboard and they would doctor that thing up for Rocker on the downside right Make him mad. And it would drive him crazy. Yeah. He would look at that radar gun after every pitch. He's, th you know, he's a guy through 96 miles an hour, 95, 96. He'd look over there and he'd see 91. And he'd try to throw harder. Yeah. Then he'd walk a few guys and then he'd end up getting taken out of the game. And the guy's walking back to the dugout that he just struck out 91. Are you kidding? <laughs> I could have hit 91. A little tapper foul. What one thing you see these days and I would say in the last decade more pitchers with maximum effort. So you used to you used to have your cruising speed and guys that would. Punch along and you'd rarely see like everything you got a hundred percent. Now everybody's up there doing because guys were pitching longer. I mean relievers are going two three innings mm -hmm. you know back in those days now. I mean, you might have a reliever coming in for three hitters and maybe one. So you know you give it max effort and you're out of there. There's a liner in the left field a base hit. Randall Gritchick on a 2 2 pitch. With a single his second hit of the game. You know back in uh, you know not that long ago I guess you know, maybe you know 15 years ago you had five starters. And five relievers you had a 10 man. Pitching staff. Can you imagine these days no. if you had a five man bullpen? Never make it. Matter of fact, most managers now will tell you you need a a 10 pitcher bullpen rotation, whether you keep seven or eight in the big leagues and then you keep three or four in the minor leagues that are on the minor league, major league train, which you can bring up. Not a taxi squad. They're pitching in the minor leagues, but right. Keep them fresh. Keep them fresh. You send guys down. You send some up. I think every major team operates that way now in some capacity. Remember back in the 80s, you know, we broke camp, at, you know, with the Brewers with 11 pitchers. That was breaking news. That extra arm in the bullpen. Unheard of. It's the topic that is most discussed. How to keep pitchers healthy. You're seeing more velocity in the game than we've ever seen. More pitchers throwing with max effort than we've ever seen. Specialized pitching. But the Tommy John surgeries and the shoulder injuries, Tommy John's the elbow, then you have the shoulder injuries, the labrum tears. 
at an all time pace record pace and it's scary there's a great book out right now by Jeff Hassan called the arm and he dug down deep to uh, research injuries ground ball to short this should be two. Arcia flips it over to Perez easy double play for the Brewers and Mariñez is out of the inning. 12 to 3 the Brewers lead the Cardinals we go to the seventh in St. Louis. Milwaukee coming to bat and a reminder that you can join the crew for fan appreciation night at Miller Park. It's presented by Chevrolet Saturday September 24th is the date all fans at the crew Saturday evening showdown with the Cincinnati Reds will be automatically entered to win a number of great prizes including a brand new Chevy Cruze. Brandon Moss moving over to first base. Cardinals have made a number of changes here, and Moss is one of them. Yadier Molina is out of the game. So this feels a lot like a spring training game right now for Mike Matheny and the Cardinals. Jose Martinez is now in left field. And the new pitcher for St. Louis is Sam Tuivalala. And ninth appearance, a 9.00 earned run average. That big guy, Tui Malala. Good one. Yeah, I listened. First time. We saw him last year with the Cardinals. His new battery mate, by the way, is Carson Kelly. Maldonado in the air shallow left back is Jerko and he wants it and he's got it right in the palm of his mitt. No problem. Tui Valala. T U I V A I L A L A. Once you get to the L A L A part yeah. you're, you're home free. Right. That's the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> Chewy Valala. Jake Elmore will bat for the Brewers. Elmore pinch hitting. Brewers batted around last inning, sent 10 men to the plate, scored six runs. Elmore had a pinch hit, 
single his last time as a pinch hitter last night. He takes a ball and it's three and one on Elmore. Good chance to get some September call up some playing time right now. Tui Valala, the 23 year old from San Mateo, California. We've seen him in the big leagues up and down the last three seasons. He pitched well his last time out, an inning and two thirds against the Pirates. Gave up a run. Three strikeouts. He throws hard, 95, 96. He was the closer at the AAA level this year in Memphis, Pacific Coast League. 17 saves for Memphis, but a 5 2 1 ERA. And he walks Elmore. One out walk. Jake Elmore with a couple of pinch hit appearances. A hit and a walk in the last two games. Most runs in a game for Milwaukee. 15 came in a game in Phoenix against the Diamondbacks. Right now the Brewers with 12. And that May 1st game in Miami or at home against Miami. May 7th against Cincinnati. And just did it against the Cubs on Tuesday. The 12 runs. Yep, a 12 to 5 victory. That game in Cincinnati, that was the uh, Aaron Hill. Three home runs. Three home run game, right? Seven RBIs. Hill with the Boston Red Sox now. He's doing a nice job. Playing a lot of third base. And a bit of a platoon over there at third. For Boston, who is back in first place in the American League East. Lead the Blue Jays by a game. That's a tight division over there. going to be the best race I think that American League East because not only are they vying for a division title but also the two teams below Boston in the wild card picture as well matter of fact you could certainly say the Yankees are still in it four and a half back of the division and four and a half is really a lot more than that when you have three teams to climb everybody's got to lose when you win. Yankees are just two and a half back to the second wild card team, which is Baltimore. There are seven teams within five games for the two wild card spots. So you can say it seven teams for two spots down the stretch. Mariners are five back. Kansas City's four back Yankees two and a half and then you got Astros Tigers Orioles Blue Jays all in a tight race and then who knows you want to certainly win the division that gets you the buy into the five game series in the division series as opposed to the one game wild card playoff VR hits it sharply and it gets by Jerko and on into center field. And if he gets it, it's a double play. Easy double play. Even with VR running, that was a bullet. A one hopper. Let's see how they rule that one. That was a, uh, a tough chance for Jerko, but they're going to give him an error. A one hop bullet. I'd like to see the official score make that play. That's no error. That's a tough play. A tricky hop on a one hopper. And into center field. Might be one they review later. E6. First and second one out here is Broxton now. Scored twice. He's been on three times. Two hits and a walk.
One and one on Broxton. That catch he made last night still the talk of the clubhouse. He's done a ton of interviews. Coming in here to St. Louis. Cardinals played in Pittsburgh yesterday and certainly they saw that a lot of the Cardinal news media wanting to hear from Broxton and see that play. That was one of the best catches of the year. Game saving catch perhaps it would have tied the game in the ninth inning. Craig Deshaun had a nice interview with him today. The kind of moments that put you on the map as a defender. Broxton is so personable. He's a great interview. He's been on a number of the national shows. He did a, an interview with MLB Network last night. Saying all the right things but having some fun. He, he called the uh, Rizzo catch. The catch that Rizzo made on Broxton and Wrigley a Peter Pan catch. <laughs> Climbing up onto the railing. Yeah. And uh, making the play. So Broxton said he felt like he owed him for that one. If you were watching our broadcast yesterday we were. We were talking about that play because Broxton after a foul ball that Rizzo didn't catch earlier in the game. Was looking at Rizzo and having some fun with him. And then lo and behold he. Robs Rizzo of a homer. So Broxton felt vindicated for that. Yeah he timed that one beautifully. He got uh, just close enough to the wall jumped straight up made the catch and. His glove was about three feet over the wall. That's how high he got up. And went a long way to get to it too. It was about 90 to 100 feet he had to go and. Made a nice catch. And he draws the walk so. Tui Valala. Will work with the bases loaded now two walks. Probably could be out of the inning. Jerko makes that pick turns it into a double play. And here comes Ryan Braun who will bat with the bases loaded. And one away. He's already driven in a pair tonight. Both of his outs have produced runs sack fly and a ground out. Yeah, but he can turn this into a big night. 81 RBIs for Braun on the season. And Braun shoots one to Moss. Throw to second and out at second base. Double play to end the inning. Braun hit it like a bullet, but right at Moss, who was over on the shift. And nothing to show for it. Council wants to take a quick look. Says, we're good. Play on. The inning is over. Brewers have a 12 3 lead as we go to the bottom of the seventh. We've done a little math on this rock. We've put some 
numbers to it. Check it out, courtesy yeah. of Fox Vision. Uh, you can see he's perfectly measuring this one. As soon as the baseball's hit, you can see Broxton out there in center field. He goes back. He's watching the baseball. Rizzo hits it about 400 feet. Broxton goes 90 feet. And look at the vertical jump. I mean, that glove 10 feet, 10 inches above the ground. I mean, it's certainly, uh, you talk about an athlete, right? Ke Keon Broxton. He could dunk a basketball oh. easily from a dead standstill. Throw it down and slap the backboard on the way by. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, that's good work. Went 90 feet to get it, and he kind of he kind of danced his way back to the wall trying to measure that jump and got as close to the wall as he needed to. You don't want to get right up against a wall because if you jump up, you might hit your shoulder, and you might lose some of your vertical leap. But that was a perfectly timed jump and saved the game. That 6-3 was sky and high for that one. Brewers have a new pitcher in Brent Suter. The left hander made a start for the Brewers in Seattle. Working out of the bullpen now. See his numbers. Yeah, but no pitcher works faster than Brent Suter. He gets it and goes. Maldonado barely has the sign down before he starts the home plate. The Harvard grab. Brent Suter his first appearance at Bush Stadium. 12 3 Brewers. We're in the seventh inning. And that one's in the air. Playable. Santana easing over. And there is out number one. Well, Craig, uh, you had a chance to visit with Broxton, not just last night, but also today. And as much as he wants to move on, uh, I know he loves talking about this great moment, which is his signature moment in the big leagues at this point. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And uh, he, he is a pleasure to talk to, that's for sure. He's going to be uh, something pretty special here in the bigs. You know, his idol's Ken Griffey Jr. I don't know if he's Ken Griffey Jr. yet, but the Brewer coaches were bantering around who he reminds them of right now. And I thought they came up with a couple of pretty good ones right now. Devon White, perhaps, or their favorite was Mike Cameron, who, of course, played some center field for Milwaukee as well. Just that uh, body type and, and athleticism and the way they he moves around like they did. He's a lot taller than both of those players. Broxton is 6'3". And I can see why the Ken Griffey Jr. comparisons come about. Not not the overall game. We're not getting carried away here. Athleticism. Ken Griffey Jr. is a Hall of Famer. But the way he plays, as Tommy Pham, the pinch hitter, strikes out. The way he plays and the way he plays with a smile. This guy loves being on the field. Yeah. Very personable. He was a skateboarding star, believe it or not, before he went to baseball full time. I'm talking about a legitimate skateboard potential athlete where you could have gone into the professional ranks in skateboarding and you know go into the X Games and all the various shows that they have there. Tony Hawk good. Tony Hawk. But you know you think about you know how things have changed for Keon Broxton. I mean after he got sent down the the last time I mean we weren't sure what his future was going to hold but you know he kept going down to the minor leagues and getting better and better and came back finally got some playing time and I think that was the biggest key playing time on a regular basis getting to stay in the lineup and every time he did that down in the minor leagues he hit and now that he's back in the major leagues getting a lot of playing time he's hitting now in the major leagues. Broxton has two hits two walks today he's been on four times his batting average is now right at 300 since being recalled from triple A that's really going to be the marker for him remember it took him forever to get a hit he was struggling so bad at the plate started 0 for 24 on the season so the overall numbers that's tough to answer when you start 0 for 24. Getting an opportunity here in Milwaukee that he would have never ever gotten in Pittsburgh. So his family's great as well. I was talking to Keon. He is very proud of his parents. His mother is a nurse. His father works with individuals who have been incarcerated and come out of jail or prison and trying to get their lives back together. He his father is a is a great man who tries to help people get their lives put back together and their son Keon is playing his way into an everyday role here in Milwaukee this season. It's a great story.
Again tomorrow, our Miller Lite What's on Tap. Game two of the series, the Brewers and the Cardinals. It'll be Jimmy Nelson against Carlos Martinez. Good pitching matchup tomorrow. 6.30 is airtime. We're back in a normal start time. Started an hour earlier tonight. 6.30 airtime, 7.15 first pitch. Big fan of the 6 o'clock start. Oh, me too. Big fan of Jerome Williams' pink glove. Yeah, how about that? Now the eighth appearance. He's been around a while. Jerome Williams saw him with the Houston Astros. A starting pitcher working out of the bullpen. A 7.43 earned run average for the veteran right-hander. Brewers lead it 12 to 3. Had a six-run six inning. Big day offensively for a number of the Brewers in the lineup today. Hernan Perez is one of them. Two doubles, a single, three runs batted in. Perez now hitting 276, and he's got his fourth hit of the game. So for the second time in the last three games, Hernan Perez with four hits. The amazing eight hits. That's a pretty good uh, week and a half for most guys. And this one he pulls into the hole between short and third. Yeah, Jerome Williams has been getting hit pretty hard. Last time out, gave up five runs to the Cincinnati Reds in an inning of work. And it's a good start again for Milwaukee. Hit number 16. Here's Chris Carter now. Carter is hitless tonight. But he does have an RBI. He had a sack fly. He hit a rocket last inning right to the left fielder. Moss. Line drive out. And that one's into center field. That's going to fall a base hit. So Chris Carter gets into the act. Base hit number 17 for Milwaukee. Two on to start the eighth inning. I got to imagine with the score the way it is, Mike Bettini's thinking about Jerome Williams finishing this game. He gets in there, and uh, normally he's going to pitch multiple innings, a slider that stayed up in his own, and Carter off the end of the bat dumps one into center field. Two on, nobody out to start the eighth inning. Brewers are now two hits shy of their season high. Santana takes a ball. Domingo with a home run tonight. Had an RBI single as well. Two for four. Hit his seventh home run of the season. Tied the game in the second inning. A two out homer. Now Cardinals scored first tonight. Had a run in the first. Then the Brewers scored in each of the next five innings, including the six run sixth. Cardinals got it to within 5 3 after a couple of runs on a Colton Wong two run homer in the fourth. But then Milwaukee answered with a run in the fifth and then a six spot in the sixth. From Wapahu, Hawaii, Jerome Williams, former first rounder by the Giants, way back 99, he was a first round draft pick out of Hawaii. He's been around a long time. He came up with the Giants just a couple of years after that, 2003, as a starter. Was a starting pitcher up and down major leagues, minor leagues. For a number of years, until just a couple of years ago, Giants, Cubs, Nationals, Angels, ground ball to third. They go to second out there, and that's all they'll get. So Santana will reach on a fielder's choice, and one away. You know that old Johnny Cash song. I've been everywhere, man. Yeah. That's Jerome Williams. Yeah. A lot of guys like that, right? He's been 
in a lot of places and I'm not just talking about major league places his his minor league register is crazy he pitched in uh, Japan for four years or Japan or in the Caribbean it's not all of that in Japan well, maybe I'm wrong about that let me check no it's all in the Caribbean I should say Good for him. He's still at it. 34 years of age. Back in the big leagues. Made a good amount of money, you know, banging around the minor leagues and different teams, different organizations. And made a lot of money doing that these days. Arcia. Three hits tonight as well, including a homer. Has scored three runs tonight. Remember the game winning RBI stat that was so popular? How long ago was that? Mm. Like 10 years ago? Yeah, early 2000s. Arcia, Arcia would have the game winning RBI tonight if the Brewers will to go, go on to win this game. <laughs> Ground ball is short, and that'll be not in time for a double play, which means an RBI for Arcia. Get the out at second base, but Arcia drives in his second run of the game. Mike Matheny wants to check it out. Well, you can win a game 19 to 18 and <laughs> drive in the first run in the first inning and get a game winning RBI. Athene's asking for a replay review here, so he's calling for a challenge. This might be overturned. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like it might. Probably going to take the RBI off the board for Arcia. Hey, when you're a rookie and you're scratching like he is. Yeah, you need everyone <laughs> sprinting down the line. You love to see that. A lot of guys would just give up on that. So Jerry Davis put the headsets on, the crew chief calling umpires over there, Todd Tishner. And all the Cardinals just saw the replay on the board, and out is the call. So a double play to end the inning. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. 13-3. The Brewers have the lead in St. Louis.
stand the man pulling a Jonathan Luke Roy mixing a trade. <laughs> You're going to drag Luke Roy into this. <laughs> Stanley F. Musial. Andrew Susak will come in to catch and he'll catch Ben Rowan first appearance for Susak with the Brewers. And the sidewinder Rowan goes to work with a nice play by VR. Long throw and it's up the line. What a heck of a play by VR. You love the effort. And yeah, no kidding. It's huh? a 12 3 ball game and VR is laying out. And did Jerko say, What are you doing, man? Taking a base hit away from him. Taking a double away from him. Almost got him out. Heck of a play. Doesn't matter what the score is. Look at this. In foul territory, gets up. Throw a little bit off the mark. Terrific play by VR. Some of his best plays at third base have been ones that we'll never remember because they were in foul territory. That one took him into foul territory. Just couldn't quite make the throw. Ben Rowan, this is an interesting guy to watch. Scrapes the knuckles on the mound on his way into the plate. Very unorthodox. Greg Garcia is going to be the pinch runner. There's a ground ball. VR up with it. Goes to first base. Takes the short out. One away. And the team is in Pittsburgh. And we saw Rowan having a nice chat with Kent to Colby in the Brewers dugout before a game. And Colby is exchanging you know, some of his ideas and some of the techniques that he used to get out to the major leagues way back when. It's good to see former players helping out. Yeah, young guys, knuckleballers do that with each other. So Phil Nico do that a lot with the knuckleballers that were around baseball and Tim Ken, Wakefield, Ken, Ken, totally doing that. Tacoby does television for the Pirates. So that was nice of him to spend a little time with Ben. Here is Jose Martinez, who came in the game in left field a couple of innings ago. You know, Tacoby was a big submariner, but not nearly as much as Rowan. Rowan really. Goes down, he almost scrapes those knuckles on the pitching mound. <laughs> Eight games at Triple A Colorado Springs. He had a 1.69 ERA. Brewers claimed him off waivers from the Blue Jays in August. Started the year in Triple A with the Blue Jays in Buffalo. 2.47 ERA in Buffalo in 37 games. He gave up one home run in Buffalo the whole season. Matter of fact, he's given up only one home run all year pitching out of the bullpen in the minor leagues. You got that natural sink just based on the delivery, and then he'll flip up that slider. Doesn't have a whole lot of downward movement on it, but you know, when a submariner throws a slider like that, I mean, down from there, it's almost as if the ball stops on you when you're getting ready to swing, and then it'll take that. That turn as it gets the home plate, it'll break as it gets the plate. It almost seems like it stops before it breaks. Played his college ball at Virginia Tech. There's a shot to third, and it rides up the arm of VR. That's into left field, and a run's going to score. That ball is hit hard. If VR picks it up, though, it is probably going to turn into a double play. Cardinals score a run, and it's 12-4. See how they score that one. Well, they gave Jericho everything. an error earlier. Yeah. They got to give VR an error. Everything here. like that has been an error tonight. Oh, is hit like a bullet. A couple of hops. My guess is it's going to be an error. And they're calling this one a single. Okay, well the Cardinals hit it, I guess. So that brings in the a little bit of homerism. How's that not? How's that a hit? And the one that Jerko missed, not a hit. Such a. Uh, that's a difference in the official scoring decisions we see around baseball all the time. I think they were both hits. Right. I agree. No doubt. That's a shot in the center field. Base hit for Brandon Moss. And so the Cardinals with three hits in the inning off Rowan. You know, as tough as it can be for right handed batters to stay closed and get hits off of guys like Rowan left handers see it really well because from the left side you see that ball out of his hand very easily. You see it all the way in. 
And that slider is always going into you. Doesn't have a whole lot to you know, keep you honest as a left handed hitter. Now Gritchick, and he's on the first pitch, fouls it away. It's been a wild run for Rowan. He has been with a lot of different teams, not necessarily pitching with a lot of different teams, but he got drafted by Texas. Rangers released him after the 14 season. He made it to the big leagues that year. And then he was signed by the Dodgers. The Dodgers then traded him to Baltimore. He was then released by Baltimore. This was all last year in July. Got released by the Orioles. Cubs signed him the next day. And then the Blue Jays picked him up off waivers from the Cubs a month later last season, 2015. And then the Brewers got him from the Blue Jays off waivers. So he's been bouncing around with all these teams as he strikes out Gritchick for the second out. He's just a pitcher looking for a home, Rock. Yeah. He's trying to stick with the Blue or the uh, the Brewers here this year, trying to make an impact, and if not with Milwaukee, maybe somebody else. Big league time with the Texas Rangers. Eight games with the Rangers in 14, and then his third game with the Brewers here this year. That's his major league service time. 27 years of age. He slings in a breaking ball for a strike. Two outs, bottom of the eighth. Brewers lead 12 4. Out hitting the Cardinals 17 10. Junior Guerra in line for the win. Center field for Broxton. And that will retire the side. So we go to the ninth. Brewers trying to close it out here in St. Louis. Getting Brewers up by eight and get live broadcast scoring updates breaking news and more right at your fingertips with MLB.com at bat the official app of the Brewers download at bat today free for your smartphone or tablet the waxing crescent where's that on the where's it, it headed to the to the gibbous roll the waxing gibbous on the way or is it already gone That's by? all I got for you okay work on it it's nice. A lot of lens on that camera. It's on my weather app here. Andrew Susak making his Brewers debut tonight. Came in the trade from the Giants, the Will Smith deal. It's been uh, Buster Posey's back up the last couple of years. Played in AAA this season. He's been hurt. Had an oblique injury down in AAA. I saw Andrew. 
leaving for the ballpark at noon today. What were you doing? I was not leaving for the ballpark. I just happened to see him. Uh, he was out in front of the hotel. He's on his way to the ballpark. He's got a lot to learn is the point. He wants to start the process. Catchers have a lot on their plate. Game planning trying to learn all these pitchers and he's been doing a lot of that. He's been spending a lot of time with Pat Murphy the Brewers bench coach who handles the catchers. Derek Johnson the pitching coach has been in all the meetings. Spent some time with the Giants as Buster Posey's back up. A little soft line at a short for the out. That'll be a good opportunity for Susak to get all of that out of the way before he arrives to spring training with the Brewers next year because the Brewers are certainly counting on Susak to try to compete for a job at the big league level next year. Here's Scooter Jeanette. He'll get a pinch hit at bat. And Maldonado Manny Pena has been pretty good in his opportunities behind home plate. And the Brewers have a young prospect catcher Jacob Nottingham and finished his year at double A. They got from the A's. They like him a lot. We saw him this spring training a little bit. He can hit Brewers have good core of catching including a big prospect in Nottingham good core of shortstops. Middle infielders and a great core of center fielders. That is a great place to be if you're an organization. Right off the end of the bat. And this will be out number two. Jerome Williams. Trying to pitch the final two innings. Pirates beat the Reds tonight four to one keeping the pressure on the Cardinals. In this wild card race. It's been a good one. It's going to be a good one. Both leagues. And the Brewers might have something to say about that wild card. Yeah, games against St. Louis. They still got another series against the, you know, Pittsburgh. Yadiel Rivera getting an at bat. First ball swinging. Not up there long. Flies out to the bottom of the ninth. We go. Last call for the Cardinals. Under the lights Thursday night Bush Stadium St. Louis and we go to the bottom of the ninth inning the Brewers and the Cardinals tonight on Fox Sports Wisconsin presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Yadiel Rivera will stay in the game to play second base got a pinch hit appearance and a fly out to right. Damian Magnifico the triple A closer 
got a little time with the Brewers earlier this year and he's back and he's on the mound trying to finish a game. Yeah, he made uh, an appearance at Wrigley Field against Chicago. That's quite the experience for Magnifico who closed games down in Triple A this year. Hard thrower, good slider. Just needs to have better command of that breaking pitch. Magnifico has a big arm, 95 to 97 with the fastball. Colton Wong, who hit a two run home run tonight at the plate and a defensive swing on a slider from Magnifico, 0 and 2 the count. Wong's home run, which came in the fourth, made it a 5 3 game. Cut the lead to two. And then the Brewers just took off from there. Scored a run in the fifth, six in the sixth. And a 12 4 lead. Jimmy Nelson and Carlos Martinez tomorrow. Perez has had a big night. His second four hit game in the last three he's played. Arcia with three hits tonight. Brewers trying to make a winner out of Junior Guerra. Spent a month on the disabled list. And Guerra comes back. Would be his first win since July 29th. <coughs> would take him to eight and three on the season. And that earned run average. Still under three for Guerra. Guerra gave up three runs tonight, three earned runs, so his ERA for the year, 296. Good progress for Junior. His split change was much better tonight than it was his first time out. Marinez, Suter, Rowan, and now Magnifico have all pitched tonight. And Magnifico walks. Called Wong to start this ninth inning. They had him 0 2. Just couldn't put him away. Every Brewer starter tonight, with the exception of Ryan Braun. Had a hit, including the pitcher Junior Guerra, who had two hits tonight. So he scored 12 runs on 17 hits, and Ryan Braun goes 0 for 3. Yeah, didn't need him, but, but he did he, drive in a couple of runs. Yeah, he drove in a run on a ground out and had a sack fly. Big RBI game from Perez who drove in three. Santana drove in a couple. Maldonado with a two run home run. And Michael Blazik scored a run. Yes he did for the first time in his career. He pinch ran for Guerra. As part of that six run sixth. Magnifico. Down 2 0. Brian Pena, the batter, his first at bat. Backup catcher has been hurt a lot this year. Knee problems. On the ground, a chopper. And Rivera will go to first for the out. First out of the inning. What's it like for a catcher catching all these new pitchers? Especially well, a guy throws hard like Magnifico. Well, a lot of these guys, you know, they, you know, we're down in the minor leagues with Susak. You know, Rowan, he caught him. Magnifico. Suda was down there you know, for a little, little bit. But yeah, it is. Uh, it takes time, you know, to get comfortable calling a game, and for those starting pitchers in particular to 
get used to him and of course Susek to understand what they try and do in certain counts against certain hitters. You catch as many bullpens as you can you get down there and you warm up pitchers to get a sense of what their pitchers are doing. Carson Kelly at the plate his first at bat came in to catch a couple of innings ago. I was watching a game earlier this year with Carlos Ruiz when he was traded from the Phillies to the Dodgers and he, he started the first day he was in L.A. and so everything was going along fine but then Kenley Jansen came in the game. This was a tight game as well. And Ruiz had never caught him before. And there was a pass ball in that inning. A wild pitch here to get Wong to third. There was a pass ball in that inning that allowed the Cubs to tie the game. And uh, the Cubs are going to win that game. And the next day, Ruiz, who was not in the starting lineup, spent the entire game in the bullpen. He caught every reliever, including Jansen. Told the bullpen catcher to take a day off because he was distraught that he had let one get away the day before and he hadn't had time to catch anybody. I would imagine a guy like Jansen, though, that's mm -hmm. a tough guy to handle. Yeah, no kidding. Goes hard, a lot of movement. Ground ball to short. This will bring a run in. Had the green, Kelly with an RBI. Had the green light 3 and 0. Thank you very much. Well, the first out in the inning was Payne on a 2 0 count. And now Kelly grounds out on a 3 0 count. For Carson Kelly, it is, is his first major league RBI. He'll take that. A young catcher. Two outs. Magnifico facing Greg Garcia. Garcia came in a pinch run. And that's a base hit to center. So the game continues here. That'll bring up Rosario. Yep, everybody's played off the Cardinals bench except for Matt Adams. This is this feels just like a spring training game. Yeah. Alberto Rosario, another catcher. And he's up there hacking. Tyler Cravey starts to get loose. Keep an eye on the pitch count for Magnifico. There's a good slider. Cardinals down to their last out. Brewers trying to put away St. Louis tonight and keep their hot streak going. Brewers would win six of seven with one more out. Swept the Pirates two out of three from the Cubs. They beat the Cardinals in the final game of the previous homestand. Yeah, good to see them with smiles on their faces. They played well. They've had three games in the last five where they've scored double digits. Twelve more tonight. There's a ground ball. And that will do it. The Brewers win. They beat the Cardinals. 12-5. An offensive barrage tonight by Milwaukee. Hernan Perez with four hits in the game. Orlando Arcia with three. And the Brewers get the win here in the opener of this four-game series in St. Louis. Good win tonight.
Time for Brewers Live. We check in with Jeff Grayson. He's standing by at our Fox Sports Wisconsin studios. Take it away, Jeff. Let's do it. Spin it around. <laughs> 